welcome to Austin, Texas for the fifth and sixth rounds of the 2023 TC America Championship here at the beautiful Circuit of the Americas. This is one of, I think, if not the only um, purpose-built Formula One circuit in the United States. This track really is a joy to drive. It's just over three miles long with about 20 turns, ranging from things from really fast high-speed S's to really slow technical second gear corners. So it really tests all the intricacies of a driver, of a car setup, and a car itself. It's been really fun piloting the number 26 rigid speed company BMW M2 around here. We've had some changes to the Hondas, so hopefully we'll see a bit more of a level playing field this weekend. So yesterday we had unofficial testing and today was the, uh, the first two days of official practice. So um, in unofficial testing, we were right at the top of the charts for both sessions, which is always a solid sign, especially not being here in a while. So sort of knocking the rust off and, and getting re-antiquated re with the, the track. And then today, unfortunately, this morning, we were hanging out right at the top two positions, but sort of got bumped down to finish P4 this morning um, with some people putting some late flyers. So not necessarily our best showing, but we were still just about three tenths of a second off the leader. And then fortunately in the second, second practice session today, um, we were able to top the charts by a healthy uh, two and a half tenths so that's always a good good feeling to go off of um, heading into call. Unfortunately in practice two today I received a uh, warning on my dash of a high differential temperature. At the time we thought maybe it was just a little bit low on diff fluid. We were going to do a whole diff fluid flush and change anyways but once the guys dumped the fluid, they found a bunch of metal shavings in the actual uh, fluid, which is never a good sign. So once you find shavings like that, really your only option is to change the part. So after going on a quite the chase, uh, luckily BMW Motorsport had a M2 differential on the truck, um, but now it has made our guys, um, you know, staying late. There's so much noise going on right now, but staying late um, to change this differential, which. Um, unfortunately was a, a fault of human error. Last year in this series, they made some of the top runners take their diffs out. Um, SRO this series inspected the differentials and long story short, the bolts of the ring gear all came apart. They were just in pieces. So the only silver lining is that we think it was leading to some other problems we were chasing with the car. And it's good that it happened in practice, not in the race. So hopefully with this brand new diff from BMW Motorsport, the car will be um, really better than it's ever been. And we won't have a, a problem in the race. So it's an unfortunate way to, to end the day, but we got good feedback on the car. And I think we have, we'll, we have a strong car underneath us for the rest of the weekend. There's a lot of variability, especially from track to track, since all the tracks in the, in the season are so different from the last. <clears throat> and really, it all comes down to driver preference and driver feedback. Um, the first thing we always do is get the tire pressures right, and then we have a base setup that we put in into the car that we set the cars up with. And then based on the driver feedback, we can make some adjustments. So those adjustments might be a sway bar adjustment, uh, camber, toe, ride height. The dampers are adjustable with just rebound, or with compression rather. But um, it's really all based on driver feedback. We have some great setup equipment that we use and we can measure things to the tenth of a millimeter, you know, to the half kilo, to the tenth of a PSI. So those are some of the adjustments we can make for each track. Lights are out. Okay, back up arrow, back up arrow. Ready? Ready? Green, 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 green. so far as six, but now at the very front, it's hotting up. 
between Catania and Yoshihara. Yeah, Yoshihara getting pretty defensive there. I think Lucas was thinking about a run down on the inside. Now he tries to get on the power early. Can he get inside as they enter the carousel? He gets that BMW inside of the Honda. Yoshihara has to give it up. Lucas Catania to the point, able to carve through those tight corners and grab the lead away from the drift champion, Dai Yoshihara. But Catania, he's now going to look in his rear view mirror and think no car taking care of the Honda, but oh boy, here comes the championship leader now. He's made a lot of ground up in the first phase of this race. It's really tight there. Garrett takes it in deep. He's going to try and get to his flank here. Can he grab the position by turn two? Colin Garrett, if he can keep it there, the track comes back to him here through this right-hander. Turn number two. Great job by Catania to flow the speed through the outside. Now it comes back in Catania's favor. Side by side for the lead. The top three, nose to tail and side by side. And it looks like Garrett, the stock car veteran, will come out in front. going for the lead. Oust wants to take it as well. Catania throws a block, but in the meantime, he's also attacking. Watch Matty Oust. She could get a run here. Puts that power down in the rear wheel drive. BMW, she'll have a slipstream. Which lane does she want to take? The top two going side by side. Catania and Garrett with Oust right there in tow. This with the stock car driver. Might be smart. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to make it three wide around the outside. This is into the big braking zone here at the end of the back straightaway. For the lead overall, Matty House wow, takes it away. Tight. Awesome, awesome move. Garrett had to really jump on the binders there, so there wasn't contact, but very aggressive move, and she grabs the lead. The fight is on for second now between Catania and Garrett. Garrett's been shuffled from the lead back to third. Catania, who looked vulnerable just a few moments ago, now finds himself second and in pursuit of Oust. Check your distance. 128. I got bright smoke. Are you talking to me? Yes, sir. I see smoke coming out right rear. We're getting reports there might be some smoke from the Colin Garrett. In fact, that the Lucas Catania car that runs there second, is. car number right 26. There. Hasn't slowed him down any. Uh, he's just got to be thinking, how do I win one of these races? No. I mean, last year it was all about Jacob Rube, Colin Garrett, and then I got these Hondas on the grid. Now that smoke is getting bad. Has yet to finish off the podium this season, Lucas Catania. Finished third in points last year. They're a really small team. They basically got one crew member per car outside of the work that Lucas and uh, his dad do on the weekend. So they're achieving a lot be knocking on the door for victories with some of these bigger teams is uh, really a testament to what the effort they're putting in. is right there again though. He's got to be thinking, is turn 15 my only opportunity of grabbing the lead here? He tucks into the draft of that TCA machine just to try and get a little bit closer to Matty. And Garrett is not close enough to attack Tanya this time. I would not think 
into the breaking zone, so maybe that allows Lucas to get more aggressive here. Heading it down towards turn number 12, into the tight stuff. Oust goes on the defensive. Catania trying to go the long way around. He's close. He's as close as he's been. He gets to the inside. Catania to the inside and snags the lead away from Mad Dog Matty Oust. Catania now just four minutes and change away from his first career win, but this is not done yet. Here comes Oust. She'll try the outside through the stadium. Racing anything can happen. Can Catania grab this first win? Just a couple of quarters to go for upstate New York's Lucas Catania. Through turn number 19, just one turn left to negotiate. Hard on the brakes, now bends to the left. Lucas Catania through turn 20 to the checkered flag. And finally, Lucas Catania is a race winner in TC America, powered by Skip Barber. Yeah, yeah, boys, let's go! Let's go! And the first thing that he said coming out of the BMW was finally. And Lucas, I think I counted a total of eight runner-up finishes in the TCX ahead of this win. And you guys come back after your, your dad's wreck in New Orleans. You're right here in the winner's circle. Not that timing plays a, a thing to everything, but how worth it was this wait for this win. Yeah, I mean, it's been, you know, two full seasons about and just consistently at the top. Um, in practice, qualifying, and in the races. So to finally get that breakthrough, um, you know, we changed the diff last night. We were here till 11 o'clock, and we're, we're a small team here. We got Alden, Tyler, Clinton for Rigid Speed Company. So to give, after that, to give them a result like that after consistent top finishes, I mean, it just, there's no better feeling, so. We saw the smoke coming out of the BMW the whole race. Was there any concern from your side in the cockpit? I mean, they, they told me about it. We thought maybe it was just some rubber in the brake caliper, but we, we got to take a look at it because, like I said, we did change the diff last night, so it might be an axle seal or something. But we made it to the end and uh, the first cut across finish line, so that's all that counts. Lucas Catania, a winner in TCX. Let's go. Let's go. There's the smile we were waiting for, Lucas. Awesome stuff. And there's the celebration with that little team. They do a lot with a little, though, that's for sure. Rigid Speed is the team from upstate New York. This is a moment that Lucas is going to relish for a long time to come. Well, after 15 podium results here in the TC America Championship, we finally scored our first win here for Rigid Speed Company. It was an absolute dogfight the entire 40 minutes. We managed to jump up into the lead pretty early on. I think in about the first 10 minutes, we were able to pass the Honda coming out of the uh, the sort of the stadium section. But shortly thereafter, we found ourselves three wide with BMWs. Uh, come down the back straightaway. So um, the lead quickly vanished and I really spent the rest of the race um, nose to tail with uh, chasing BMW in front and getting chased behind by Garrett. So uh, we had a bunch of smoke billowing out of the 26 car, which we later found out is was a loose fitting in the differential that we replaced last night. So hopefully everything is resolved, but that was one of the biggest concerns throughout the whole race was people didn't really know, you know, what's was it something with the engine? Was it a cut tire? We couldn't really pinpoint it, but on my end, um, the car felt fine. I wasn't really getting any sort of alarm, so um, I just kept driving and, and was just kind of hoping that we made it to the end of the race. And um, with about five minutes left, I was able to just apply enough pressure on the lead car that uh, I think I just sort of was able to wear them down a bit, had a better car underneath me, and I was able to sort of sneak inside to take, uh, take the lead. and and was able to hold on to it. So I knew we had a very strong car, I knew we had a fast car, and I was just confident in my abilities here as a driver to have, have the race pace that we needed um, to stay out front and, and, and be there when it mattered at the end of the race. So, I mean, I'm just completely overjoyed that we finally got um, our first professional win here with Rigid Speed Company and just sort of finally got that breakthrough moment. Once we tasted it and once we sort of finally were able to do it and achieve it, it just, I think it just helps the confidence as a team myself as a driver and just all around I'm um, just uh, just a good accolade to have underneath our belt so I'm uh, just super stoked and hopefully we can uh, we can repeat repeat tomorrow score some good points and, and carry the momentum uh, in round six of the unfortunately we had a pretty bittersweet ending to 
uh, an otherwise great weekend here. We started the race in position five because they grid you based on lap time from race one. So everyone was extremely close, but we did put in the fifth fastest time um, in the race. So I had a, you know, a pretty, pretty average start. It's kind of everyone fell in line and we spent most of the race chasing and just trying to get in front of the car in front. We were much quicker, especially as the race went on, but it just couldn't, uh, didn't have enough uh, straight line speed to make any sort of move coming down the back straight away. So um, unfortunately, after all that, we ended up breaking a control arm or not even breaking, just bending a suspension arm. So I essentially lost all my steering and um, just was unable to continue. So a very unfortunate end to the race. Um, not very good for the championship, not good for scoring points. So n don't really know what to say because I don't, I don't exactly know why it bent to the degree that it did. Kind of is what it is, very unfortunate. We don't typically, uh, not finish the races so um, all in all I mean hard to be upset with our first win but um, just not yeah not not the way you want to end the weekend it's always the hardest having to get back on the plane um, you know and sit and ruminate over this until till the next round so huge thank you to rigid speed company for doing this but uh, look forward to Virginia and uh, thanks for watching guys I'll see you guys in the next episode take it easy fam peace out